You are tuned to Ari Learning, and I am your host, Teacher Teacher. In this mixtures and separation lesson, the focus will be on the separation technique, paper chromatography. Check the description box for links to all the videos related to this unit. By the end of this lesson, we should be able to determine the properties of the components of mixtures that are separated by paper chromatography and explain the process of paper chromatography. Let's do a quick recap before we proceed with the lesson. Remember to note that the components of mixtures are separated based on physical properties such as particle size, crystalline structure, boiling point, solubility, magnetism, sublimation. Also, I will reinforce that these are not the only physical properties that determine a suitable separation method for the components of a mixture. Now we can proceed with the focus for this lesson which is paper chromatography. First we need to know what paper chromatography is. A suitable definition states that paper chromatography is a technique used to separate the components of a pigmented mixture, example dyes. Keep in mind that paper chromatography is used to separate the components or pigments of colored substances such as dyes and inks. Let's see what properties facilitate the separation of pigments or colors in a mixture using paper chromatography. And these normally include the differences in their solubility, size, mass, and absorption properties of the different particles. The apparatus setup for paper chromatography is very simple. We will start with the chromatography paper, which is this white strip of absorptive paper. And this can be cut from either filter paper or paper towel. Now the chromatography paper is called the stationary phase because it does not move during the experiment. And to the base of the filter paper, a baseline is drawn 1.5 to 2 centimeters from the tip of the chromatography strip. And the baseline is drawn using a pencil, which is actually graphite and not ink because inks contain pigments, which would separate during the process. And this would interfere with the experimental results. Now the sample of the dye mixture or ink is placed as a dot in the center of the baseline. The chromatography strip is then inserted into a suitable solvent within a container such as a beaker and the solvent is called the mobile phase because it moves up the stationary phase and as the solvent moves up the stationary phase it takes with it the different pigment molecules but it takes them or carries them at different rates. We will now take a detailed look at the chromatography procedure and observation. So step one we use a pencil to draw the baseline which is this horizontal line at just about 1.5 to 2 centimeters from the tip of the chromatography strip. Step two, we're going to apply a small sample of the pigmented mixture as a dot in the center of the baseline and we're going to allow that sample to dry. The chromatography strip with the green dye sample is inserted into the solvent ensuring that only the tip of the strip is in the solvent. Notice that the chromatography strip absorbs the solvent and the solvent moves up the strip. When the solvent passes the baseline, it carries with it the pigments or the molecules of the green dye. The solvent carries the pigments or molecules of the green dye at different rates. So eventually, the two pigments of the green dye mixture are visible. The blue pigment moves with the solvent further up the strip, while the yellow pigment stays closer to the baseline. The chromatography strip is removed from the solvent and air dried. Now in this experiment, the solvent was 50% ethanol by volume and the dye was green food coloring. The green dye separated into yellow and blue pigments. The blue pigment moved with the solvent for a distance of 5.7 centimeters from the baseline, whereas the yellow dye moved 4.7 centimeters. Once we have made our observations, we should have the answers to the following questions. Question one, what was the color of the dye mixture used? Question two, what happened when the tip of the chromatography paper was inserted in the solvent? Three, what color solutes or pigments were observed after the solvent passed the baseline? That is a point where the sample was applied. And four, record the distances moved by the solvent and any solutes present in the mixture. So 
for the paper chromatography results, we observed that the solvent was absorbed by the chromatography paper and moved up the strip, carrying with it the pigments of the green dye at different rates. The blue pigment or solute moved further up the strip than the yellow. In fact, the blue solute moved with the solvent. As you can see here, it is in line with the solvent front. Now, the measured distances moved by the solvent and the blue solute was 7.5 centimeters from the baseline, while the distance moved by the yellow solute or pigment was 4.7 centimeters from the baseline. We could also tabulate the distances moved by the solvent and each solute as shown in the table. So here we have the distance moved by the solvent, the distance moved by the blue solute, and the distance moved by the yellow solute. In the analysis and interpretation of the results from our paper chromatography experiment, we will answer three questions as follows. Question one, identify the stationary and mobile phases of the paper chromatography process. And of course, we know that the stationary phase is the chromatography paper, which is the absorbent paper, and the mobile phase is the solvent. And for this experiment, we used 50% ethanol by volume. Question two, explain why the solute particles of the dye mixture separated into different colors. The solute particles of the dye mixture are separated due to a number of properties, such as the differences in the solubility, the size, the mass, and absorption properties of the different pigments in the green dye. Question three, explain why one solute moved further up the strip, which was the blue solute, moved further up the strip than the yellow solute. There are three possibilities here. The solute that moved further up the strip was one, more soluble in the solvent, therefore it moved with the solvent. Two, the blue dye moved further up the strip because the particles were smaller in size and mass compared to the yellow solute, therefore it was easier for the solvent to carry them or move them up the filter strip or the chromatography strip. And third, the blue pigments were less absorbent than the yellow ones. Therefore, they do not adhere strongly to the stationary phase and are easily moved up the paper by the solvent. The lesson summary points are as follows. Paper chromatography is a technique used to separate the components of a pigmented mixture, such as dyes and inks. Chromatography separates the components of a mixture based on solubility, size, mass, and absorption properties. The chromatography paper, which is the absorbent paper, is the stationary phase. The solvent is the mobile phase. A green dye consists of blue and yellow pigments. So it's quiz time, and you have five seconds to answer each question after it is read aloud. Question one. When conducting separation by paper chromatography, what is the term for the solvent used? A, baseline, B, filter paper, C, stationary phase, D, mobile phase. And the answer is the mobile phase. Question two, complete the following sentence. The chromatography paper used in the process of separating the components of ink is called A, baseline, B, filter paper, C, stationary phase, D, mobile phase. The answer is stationary phase. Question three, we will use a diagram to the right of our screen to answer this question. A known dye contains four pigments, Q, R, S, and T, which separate during paper chromatography as shown in the diagram. Identify the pigments that are present in the unknown dye sample. Options A, Q and S, B, R and T, C, Q and T, D, S and T. <music> And the answer there is B, R and T. So if you notice that the unknown sample, this solute matches up with R and this solute matches up with T. Question four. Michaela did an experiment to separate the pigments in chlorophyll of a plant. What separation technique did Michaela use to separate the components of chlorophyll? A, paper chromatography, B, simple distillation, C, filtration, D, solvent extraction. <music>
And the answer there is paper chromatography. Question 5. During the separation of the solutes in a green ink, it was observed that the blue solute moved further up the stationary phase than the yellow solute. Which statements best describe the results of the experiment? 1. The blue solute is more soluble in the solvent used. 2. The yellow solute is more soluble in the solvent used. 3. The particles of the blue solute are smaller in size and mass. 4. The yellow solute is less absorbent. The options are A, 1 and 3, B, 2 and 3, C, 1 and 4, D, 1, 3 and 4. And the answer there is A, 1 and 3. We have reached the end of our lesson. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share and subscribe. When you subscribe, you will receive notifications as new videos are uploaded. So until next time, I am Teacher Teacher with iRelearning.